What's going on? Welcome back to the channel. So today when I talk to you about Rambus, I want to go over why I feel this is a screaming buying opportunity, go over some of the data points and everything else that you need to know. But first, make sure you hit that thumbs up. And with that, let's get right to it. So on Friday, it did go down 3.56%, $41.10 the low, $43.40 the high. So it definitely was getting hit over the last five days. It is down 7.78%. Over the last six months, down 27.06. So this is a pretty good discounted uh, semi play. And so semis have been running. I'm pretty sure everyone knows that at this stage in the game, but there is a very good catalyst coming up right around the corner, and that is essentially their earnings. And a lot of people, it seems to kind of rinse and repeat itself, but leading up to November, people always just, it gets hit. And that's been something that's been happening over the last 10 years. A lot of people just seem to disregard trend, but... For those value investors, this is a, a very, very good opportunity to buy. So in case you do not know, this is what they do. So you can always pause and read through it. 623 employees founded in 1990, based out of good old San Jose. But uh, like I said, over the last 10 years leading up to November, it usually lags. Uh, so that's obviously the rough truth of that but november there is a 90 percent win rate and so ultimately it does yield on average 10.3 percent and that is largely because of their earnings so once again time and time again people lead into their earnings with low expectations and so their earnings is slated for october the 28th and so as of right now 51 cents is that earnings per share Estimate based on analysts, 147.5 million for the revenue. And over the last 90 days, there's been one positive and one negative revisions uh, to their earnings per share. But generally, just looking right here, their earnings per share, so that 51 cents, does represent a 8.88% kind of negative year over year growth. So once again, low expectations. If they are able to exceed that, then this is where you could see a very nice positive correction to the stock price and because of all this and some of the other data points I'm going to talk on in a second I did actually decide to buy so I'm pretty happy with that 100 of my shares that did lock in with uh, a quickly sold a covered call but aside from that everything else is uh, I'm going to let it run for November so even looking outside of this uh, upcoming earnings which is going to be announced in a week and a bit you have a lot of good double digit growth. So 35% for that, uh, for looks like Q4 2024, 50% and you guys can see the rest. So a lot of good stuff. Same goes for their revenue, a lot of good double digit growth. And in my opinion, I think this is rather conservative, uh, despite everything. So yeah, what's your guys' thoughts on that in the comments below? Generally, I like to go over a lot of other data points such as technicals, what analysts are saying, as well as shorts. Even though this might not be a squeeze play, it's good to analyze what shorts are doing. So right now, 3.16% of the free flow is being shorted, works out to be 3.38 million shares. On Friday, shorts did increase 514,000 shares. So that is net on a side note. So quickly going over here, there was 1.15 million shares being traded, 1.87 million is the average so by shorts increasing roughly net about 50 percent of the volume give or take that is a very good indication of why it went down so yes this isn't that heavily shorted but with low volume you typically uh, manipulation does kind of run uh, rampant a little bit so in my opinion i think that just adds to the discounted uh, aspect of the stock but cost to borrow average is 0.57% and then short score is 29.71. Moving over to options, 131,000 in calls, 74,000 in puts. And so there was a lot more money getting into uh, obviously the stock through options, not necessarily through, I guess, common stock, but 41% of all the options being done on Friday were bearish. Of the call options that were purchased, you do see a consensus for it to recover to that roughly $47 range. Regrettably, this only does have monthly chains, so clearly it's not all that popular. But still, with semis running, uh, I think that could really, it could get that benefit as well, right, behind the scenes. And then puts, you see anticipation for it to be sub roughly around $42.50 to the $40 range. So 
I think there is still a hell of a lot more upside anticipated. And I think behind the scenes, a lot of uh, even though shorts did increase, a lot of individuals are estimating that they are going to exceed on their earnings. It's kind of funny how things are, right? Uh, people always panic when it's going down, but good actual companies, people are afraid to buy the dip with. And yeah, it, it kind of is funny how that does always play out. But I myself, uh, I did buy, I'm pretty happy with how it did play out. So I bought in at $41 and roughly, I think I have an average of 25 cents. So very close to kind of this price. So I was able to take advantage of, in my opinion, just the overreaction that was happening. But quickly popping over to IBKR, just to give you guys a quick overview. So the technicals uh, based on Friday, you see it kind of dipping below that ALMA. So I have the ALMA super trend, 5,100 and 200 day moving average. So it is below a lot of the key kind of moving averages that a lot of people generally like to look at, but super trend is showing a nice reversal and the broader market is extremely optimistic as of right now and very much justified, right? A lot of the good macro data points are all very bullish. Um, even looking at the MACD, you're starting to see a very nice sign of a breakout, similar to kind of this, or just generally in the past, uh, what has happened. But quickly moving over here, latest Morningstar report does show the fair market value for Rambus being $61.53. So just to put it in perspective, it is sitting at $41 and change. So that is a pretty deep discount for a very hot sector analysts as well are saying the exact same thing so the latest rating did come out roughly last month 85 dollar buy rating by rosenblatt kevin who has a 61 percent success rating and then aside from that two months ago 66 dollar price target uh, that was uh, by this individual right here 58 percent success rating and 67 for uh, aaron who is uh, with Wells Fargo, 60 or $85 price target. But regardless, as a consensus, $75.50 is the uh, average there. And that does represent a 83.34% upside. So in my opinion, analysts do see a lot more uh, upside. Of course, this isn't the most popular semi out there. Only four analysts are kind of looking at it. But still, I think given all the data points out there, it does signal that this is a pretty deep discount and does have a lot more upside anticipated. But as of late, though, these are all the transactions that have occurred on the secondary market above $100,000. So it is fair to assume, given the amount of selling, a lot of this is due to and linked to shorting. So a lot of shorts used the secondary market to really kind of push it down. But aside from that, it did really prove that like there's a lot of good uh, upside, right? Because even just generally moving back over to the chart uh, briefly, it did actually have a very nice kind of move higher with uh, the broader market. So it, it has the ability to really move higher. Uh, it just, again, um, it's how the technicals are playing out and everything. So right now with at $41 and 18 cents, it is trading between this pivot and this R1. So 41.13 is gonna be that strong support to kind of bounce off that as a general low. And then 43.55 is gonna be the next strong resistance slash target. So like I already mentioned, I think in the short term is just more of a technical breakdown, nothing to do with the stock itself and plus I guess you could just say it's being manipulated essentially by shorts in the short term uh, momentarily so yeah in my opinion if you are looking to buy just take note of some of the strong support and resistance points below that so 3872 3722 and then again that 4113 uh, dependent if it does hold into the next couple of trading days but like I said I did buy, I really like this, uh, just the sector. I know that there's gonna be a lot more kind of upside on a macro level across the broader market because uh, a lot of points out there are indicating more of a expansionary stage in the market. And one thing did happen last week for the first time in a while and money markets. So I like to analyze what is happening behind the scenes. And based on last week, there was $6.56 billion leaving money markets to move into equities. So I've always uh, often enough talked on a very big rotation that might be coming in the foreseeable future once these entities do feel very, very comfortable. 
with rate cuts and everything else. And of course, this company, Rambus, could really benefit from that uh, cut as well, most likely a 25 basis point for the November 7th meeting. So I think a lot of the data points are signaling more of an expansion in the broader market and this company could really benefit. So yeah, let me know your guys' thoughts. Do you guys own this? Is there any other semis that you guys do own? Of course, I think the fair one to say is going to be NVIDIA. But yeah, what's your guys' thoughts? Don't forget to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. I always greatly appreciate that. And two things, take advantage of this. It does give you eight free stocks. Each stock is valued up to $2,000. So this is a kick-ass deal only up until November the 30th. Link to that is in the description below and also the comments. As well, I did launch memberships. So if you like my channel, want to support it, you can definitely do so with a tier or if you're just looking for buy signals on stocks and options i have another tier for that as well so yeah both are in the description below and also the comments with all that appreciate all of you guys watching